This is Changing Nature, where we have conversations about how to live a more nature-connected, more environmentally conscious life. Welcome. I'm Ria Michelle, and in our next two episodes, I'm exploring our relationship with houseplants and how they can benefit our mental health. My guest is Liv from Fancy Plants, an independent plant shop in Bristol, England. According to the Royal Horticultural Society, research has shown that plants can positively impact human health, most through well-being and productivity improvement. While there is some support for an effect to our physical health, the most significant evidence is for that positive impact on our mental health. From improving mood and reducing stress, they can increase productivity and concentration, even increasing pain tolerance from studies done in a hospital setting. On that note, let's dive into this week's Changing Nature conversation with Liv from Fancy Plants. I am Liv. Um, I am one of the uh, co-owners slash managers of Fancy Plants, which is um, a houseplant shop in Bristol. Um, we have two shops and we're very close to our third birthday. How exciting. I know. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am really interested to hear what you have to say about houseplants and the effect that they can have on our environment i my home environment's always been very precious to me you know my, my little haven i suppose and um plants have always played a big role in that and it's just so interesting to me you must have a lot of uh contact with a lot of different people you know very very different people um all of whom have a passion for plants and so yeah i'm really interested to to have this conversation with you so you know many studies have shown that house plants are really beneficial to human health in lots of different ways um to their to our well-being if somebody wanted to start a plant collection where would you suggest they begin yeah absolutely so there's we that's the question we get when people come in they just want a plant that's unkillable completely robust <laughs> I leave it for two weeks and go on the summer holiday. Um, all the classics. What happens if I underwater it? I just want something that's the easiest going housemate ever, basically. And that's literally we have that hundreds of times in a week. So um, there's lots of suggestions. I think people think that they just need to put a house plant on a windowsill and it needs sun all day, and that's how you'll keep it alive. And actually, lots of plants don't want direct sun, and the direct sun is the trickier end of the scale to find a house plant to suit that um, environment um so we tend to suggest things like uh, snake plants um i've got a very big one behind me here as tall guy um zz plants or zz plants if you're obviously in the uk but it comes through about from america so we're always saying zz plants um devil's ivy or epipremum so lovely trailers are happy in sort of lower light and kind of um are very robust and forgiving to the sort of underwaterers and sometimes the overwaterers as well. They're very kind of um, obvious about what they want. So, you know, they'll drop a yellow leaf if you're giving them too much water and their leaves will curl in if you're underwatering. So it's kind of quite a nice scale. Uh, you don't have to kind of do guessing work with them. Um, also things, lovely things like philodendron. So just a really basic heart leaf philodendron um, are really great. Um, that This one is a cutting that actually one of my old landlords gave us when we were leaving his flat. And um, it's just completely taken off and it's only kind of just over a year old and it's it's nice and chunky now. So um, those are definitely the ones I'd suggest. Um, I think a lot of people come in and want, uh, they go, oh, I'll just get a cactus or a succulent. Uh, that's the easiest thing. They don't need any water, do they? Um, and that's true um but they need loads of light which lots of people don't kind of have in their houses you know lots of people live in uh student accommodation that's really shady um or um garden flats or basement flats um and so cacti and succulent just wouldn't really do a lot you know they wouldn't necessarily die but they wouldn't give you any exciting new growth and i think people are kind of coming into that point with houseplants where they want to see a new leaf all the time. They want that kind of reward basically for all their hard work for taking care of it. And succulents and cacti are a little bit kind of um, just flatlined. So they're great as a long-term um, collector's piece because kind of long-term they're amazing when they get really big, but, and there's immediate reward and immediate kind of um, give back from your hard work in houseplant care. Cacti and succulents can be a little bit um, slow growing. That's so interesting. I think a lot of people do get dissuaded from starting on that kind of houseplant journey because they're convinced they're going to kill it. And, um, you know, I think it is really about finding plants that suit your habit. I mean, you mentioned that one there where you, where it gives you very clear indicators of, of whether you've overwatered or underwatered. And I, I think that, yeah, if you, if you are a 
an overwater or an underwater, you can find plants, can't you, that, that would suit your habit, that kind of, it is, we've talked about like it being a relationship. So you find a find yeah. plant that suits the sort of relationships you have. Um, yeah. How do you go about finding information on plants that would be a good fit? Is it is it to really go to your plant shop, someone like Fancy Plants, and and, and to just ask questions, say, you know, I am an overwaterer. <laughs> what, what plants would suit me? Yeah, absolutely. No, you're right. It's like sort of the dating scene, I guess, in that respect. We have to definitely play... Um, a lot of the time so um we often have people come in and go i want to plant for my living room and and we have to kind of go okay so does it have a window where which direction does the window face is it south or north face etc where in the room will it go um and often if they come in and um they kind of give us this information and we're still not 100 percent sure we do often say could you go back and take a picture and bring it back of the space you want the plant to go or a video of the room and that really helps us kind of work out um what like because a lot of people kind of say oh my room's really dark and it, you know it's really shady but actually because they're thinking this plant needs to be <clears throat> excuse me in full sun when absolutely that's not the case and we look at it and go oh that's quite a bright space to us you've got loads more options than what you think you do so it's kind of a bit of a we kind of have a bit of an interview in the shop almost of kind of um what the situation is at home and things um but definitely i think in regards to habits we kind of go um you know are you planning a long-term trip you know do you go away a lot are you home all the time do you have time to mist it every day or would you rather something that you're literally checking once every couple of weeks um and often someone will go oh my gosh I would never mist every day that's not for me absolutely not you know I need something that's mega easy or they might go oh yeah no I I can it's by where I brush my teeth so I can just mist it while I brush my teeth so it's kind of um finding that level of not commitment by any stretch but um that kind of interest I guess in every day or every week or every month even um it's normally on the end of the scale of I need something quite straightforward or at least something that's going to tell me what's up and what it needs rather than um yes I'd love to have a proper project um because the kind of project ender for those that have kind of been doing it for like you're know, having plants for a few years and have kind of come accustomed to um, what they need and also are happy to kind of um, learn some lessons and to kind of get a brown leaf every now and then or you know have you know have to kind of play a bit of detective at home and move it around a little bit until it finds its right house the kind of right place in their home um, but most people generally want a plant that they know will be okay and that doesn't need too much love yeah are there species that we should really avoid as a novice I mean you mentioned cactus yeah. they're they're kind of on the edge of it are there other ones that are really that are, are, are species that people are really attracted to but actually it's a little bit tricky when you're first starting yeah. out I think yeah there's um so there's a species called calathea which are tropical plants I don't know if I've, I've got one here actually so this is quite a boring calathea really but they're they're beautiful they look kind of hand painted almost um and yeah so they would they would in their natural environment would be on the bottom of a kind of rainforest floor um so completely shaded by the top really top canopies of from direct sun um, and they have these beautiful kind of darker underleafs um which helps them reflect sunlight off of the floor of the jungle essentially so they're trying to kind of get as much sunlight as they can but without getting direct sun um, and they look amazing. There's some amazing species. We've got things like a, it's called a pinstripe or a rattlesnake, and they literally look like someone's come along and done a proper oil painting on them. Um, but they just need that next level of care, so they need to be misted each day. They don't want to dry out, so they're not one to be left for a two week summer holiday. Um, they um, don't like tap water, which sounds really terrifying, but it's just sort of as simple as leaving water out for 24 hours or boiling your kettle before you go to bed and using that water in the morning. But the minute we say, oh, they don't like water straight from the tap, you can see sort of the customer kind of go, oh, no, not for <laughs> Or they go, oh, yeah, totally, I collect water and that's so easy for me to do. I didn't know they liked rainwater. I can do that for all my plants. So is that kind of... Um, being really honest and upfront with what they need originally in, in the first conversation um, and then um, and then going from there really and kind of gauging their reaction to the advice we're giving as to whether they feel they can manage that day to day. Yeah um, so it's about that routine huh about finding something that fits your routine. 
Yeah, exactly. And if you're out, you know, if you're, uh, I don't know, a nurse or a doctor and you're doing five night shifts a week and the other days you're obviously catching up and sleep or with family or whatever and you don't want to have to do misting at when you get in at 7am after your night shift, then absolutely the calathea is the right choice for you. In the same breath, things like ferns, they're so popular. Um, and I think there's a co- sort of common misconception that they're mega easy because everyone has one um but again they need to be lightly damp they want to be misted not so fast on the tap water you know they're cool with that but again it's that the minute they dry out they can deteriorate really quickly um so i think because they're so common things like you know boston ferns you know everyone has a boston fern um they people think that they're mega easy and they often come in and go oh ferns are easy i know those people have got them but actually they take quite a lot of work to keep to that kind of high level of you know green leafy really full new growth um so yeah i'd probably avoid those two if you're if you're kind of new to the house plant world <laughs> amazing so what what do you think the biggest mistake people make is it is it choosing a species that isn't that doesn't suit them or um do people tend to overwater or underwater? What's the sort of what's the thing that people should look out for to to kind of make yeah. sure they don't do? Or is it is it matter of you know getting something that suits your routine and then just knowing what to do, like having that kind of check sheet and making sure yeah. you're, you're looking after it properly? Yeah, absolutely. You're so right. And we were talking about this before, weren't we, about kind of routines and people really just need it to fit into their every day. And if it doesn't, then it's going to get neglected because it you know no one has time to kind of do constant care all day long um so i think two things really um one is going to a specialist houseplant shop and getting a plant that suits the space that you want it so without mentioning big names but if you're going to go to big supermarkets or big hardware stores and just pick up you know a plant from there with a and it just has a tag that has a watering can symbol and a little sun with a cloud behind it or whatever it is then that doesn't actually give you any information and google can be so conflicted as well you know there's lots of personal accounts about how to care for house plants but sort of the general knowledge can get kind of overwhelmed by that um so going to a local obviously i'm encouraging independent sh- you know, independent shops as well local independent house plant shop near you um and getting care from care advice from them is number one definitely because that's just going to give you the best start regardless um us and i know plenty of others give out care cards with house plants so we give you the full latin name the common name and then watering and light needs and then any extra information that we can give you too um but it's just quite a nice um way to start off so you're kind of at least starting on the right foot and then whatever happens from there you can contact them afterwards you know we on instagram we have so many queries on instagram and we try and get back to people there and on email and things the other thing i would say is that i think people me included definitely um is that water equals love so i think people just think oh it looks a bit sad i'll just give it some more water and actually um you know kind of the the end of your water glass on your nightstand after a night's sleep every morning people just put a bit of water on you know a plant on their bedside or in their bedroom and it just that is just kind of the opposite a lot of the time um and that can actually encourage kind of pests and all sort of stuff really um so i think yeah the overwater is um in us i think yeah people think if i water it it will just bounce back and sometimes there's other issues that um you need to kind of account for first that's so true the the water equals love i know i'm so guilty of that too it's like oh it's looking a little yeah, a little sad. Let's give it some more water. No, that's not not necessarily the right thing to do. So that's that's a good one to watch out for. Okay, so imagine we have this plant and it's thriving, um, and we want to start growing our collection. Is it? How do we go about doing that? Is, are there species that pair really well together, and that's the sort of the way we should go is to get, take the next step in the same route? Um, do you have any advice on yeah how basically how to grow your house plants collection? Yeah, of course. So if you've um, got a couple of houseplants, like you say, and you're kind of feeling really encouraged because they're all thriving and that's great and you want to either take it up a level and kind of get something that needs a bit more care or you just want to kind of maintain a really nice collection that is still quite easy, there's a few things that you can go for. So either if you've got one that likes to be misted and likes high humidity, so say if you've got a calathea and you're doing really well with that, like we were discussing before, and you're really pleased with 
with it and you fancy something else that likes high humidity, you could go for something like a fern, for example, um, or um, an ascanthus, a lipstick plant that likes humidity. And you could pair them together. So when you're misting, you're misting both of them and they sort of create their own little eco climate together. So in the shop, all our calatheas will always be grouped together no matter what. We never have calatheas separated because they really thrive together. They kind of... Um, take stuff from each other and give stuff back as well um you in the in like a natural environment you'd never see just one little kind of calathea on its own you know you'd always see a, a collection of them because they they like i was saying they kind of work really well as a group um the other thing is that like we were saying about um at the beginning of the chat with the full sun and not a lot of houseplants don't like full sun and people get really frustrated because they've got a lovely big bay window and it's beautiful and it gets really direct sun and they just want something like a calathea or something something in it to fill a space what you can do is you can get a sun lover so you could get a, a bird of paradise um, or a croton or something like that that love full sun lap it up all day long a nolina i've got a big nolina here i don't know if you can see that's so a nice big ponytail palm or something um and that can shade the shade lover so often um in the shops we have massive bird of paradise i know that's not obviously um doable for everybody you know it's i, I would be able to have one in my house but nice big kind of six seven eight foot uh strelitzia um and they will shade something below it so like an aglaonema or, or something a chinese evergreen that doesn't want direct sun but it is technically in a really sunny window um and that works quite well as a pairing so um we often um we often sell kind of pairs that way so to restaurants and stuff a lot of the time they have big bird of paradise we just did one last week actually um and then they had some shade lovers behind it and that's worked really well um because You're creating yeah. a, a, like an indoor jungle really aren't you You're yeah kind of re recreating that forest structure yeah that's fantastic and, yeah no it's 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 really it's it's a, a really effective way of having lots of different types of plants in one room because a lot of people just have one bedroom in a in a shared house or whatever and you know it's really sunny and they're really struggling and they want to and so we just sort of we look at the pictures that they bring in and we just create layers with them and it's worked really well that's amazing so do you have any any kind of final advice or or where people can go to basically fall in love with houseplants is it to visit shops I think like yours which I mean your first plants is like is like an indoor jungle isn't it I mean it's yeah. it's, it's so um verdant my struggle has always been I'll go into a plant shop and I'll fall in love with the form of a plant before yeah. I know anything about its care <laughs> and that can be a bit of a struggle so I think just be, being more educated on more different types more species so that you don't go down that route is probably helpful yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, like you just said, I completely encourage people to go to local houseplant shops, even garden centres obviously have really good knowledge on plants regularly. Normally they're kind of um, outdoor plant, their knowledge is based on outdoor plants, but they have loads of big houseplant collections. So they will have a specialist, a specialist there. Um, but definitely starting there, almost sort of go in a bit with blinkers and go, right, this is what I need. This is where it's going to go. Can you just show me the ones I need and we'll suit that spot? Um, and then if you want to kind of experiment, that's fine. I think also don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to um, try something, give it a go. And I know obviously money is... Um, is never to be taken for granted but you can go so for example our calatheas they're priced normally from about 18 pounds which you know is a, is a decent amount of money if it's just going to die in a couple of weeks and you're worried about that but we do sell a, a slightly cheaper species called a maranta and they're under 10 pounds um, and so we often say why don't you start with this if you can keep this going and it's good then you can come back and get the beautiful calathea that you've always wanted you know we never send we don't want to send a plant away for somebody to be worried that they're going to be wasting their money or you know going to be disappointed um so i definitely start with that um, I'd also check out, I'll uh, give a bit of a shout out here, the plant rescuer on Instagram. Um, she's a lovely woman called Sarah who started her initiative a few years ago. And she's basically like, no houseplant should go to landfill. There should be no wastage in the houseplant world. A, pl a plant, unless it's been completely savaged by a pest, but even then you could probably bring it back, should always be looked after a bit of TLC and you'll get it back to a thriving plant. It might not be perfect and it might have weird shapes, hence my snake plant here that's kind of... <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you won't be able to buy this beautiful symmetrical plant, but they will be able to give something back. Um, so we've recently launched um, uh, uh, the rescue boxes uh, through Sarah's scheme where, um, you know, 
plants that aren't doing so well in the shop that aren't sickly but just maybe have been underwatered at one time or have lost a few leaves or have got a bit of a brown spot from some sun scorch or something um are going we're selling them as a group of plants in a box for 14.95 uh, we can post around the uk as well and it just means that those you know there's four to six plants those plants otherwise would have been sat out the back and maybe our staff could have taken them home to nurture or whatever but we really want to give them a new home and a new lease of life you know we don't make any money from it it's not about that it's about kind of making sure that uh, these plants aren't just chucked in the bin um, and it gives people a project people love projects they love cheap plants bargains and project plants and you know that's kind of that in a box basically um so we really kind of wanted to support that and it's been so they literally sell out in minutes we we add one and it's it's gone in the second so it's been really great um another thing i would say is that if you're worried about your house plants so if you've got one and you're like oh god it looks a bit sad or it looks a bit kind of uh, it's not growing or you know you've had it for a couple of years and you haven't had a new leaf or something i would always take a couple of cuttings um and see what you can do with it so as an example this is um a philodendron silver sword and this is new growth so this is actually looking a lot happier but for a while it was just these sort of like pathetic sticks and i was like oh i've just lost it now i've had it for a few years i bought it um way before the shops um and i thought it's just come to the end of its life but i thought what i'll do is i'll take a cutting when i moved house it looked even worse so i took a cutting um and literally it was these it was these that I took cuttings off and look that one now has got all this brand new growth and I can plant that it's got a lovely root system I don't know if you can see um and I can now plant that in with the I with the mother plant so I can have a nice full plant or I can have two different plants so and I did the same with uh, Monstera that I had as well that's doing really well and I think you know people just go oh it's dying I've just got to write it off now that's it but actually I think taking cuttings putting them in some water putting them on a bright windowsill can do wonders um in regards to trying to get at least a piece of the plant through to the summer and the, you know the spring and summer um, it's such so a wonderful initiative and I think it's mm -hmm. such a great mindset shift because yeah. you know thinking about house plants and thinking about mental health and how perhaps killing your house plants is is not the best thing for your mental health yeah. um but actually you can turn that right around and with the right information and the right and the will you could rescue them and that that must be an amazing feeling so yeah that's a really fantastic initiative i didn't know about yeah, no, it, it's it's been really fun to be a part of actually. And before we couldn't, we when we don't normally ship um, plants kind of across the country. We don't post or anything, um, but with these ones we can because there's sort of um, there's not less pressure because we want to make sure they're safe but they're they're easier to wrap we can wrap them in a group whereas you know when you're posting single plants it becomes a whole big complicated issue um so yeah we we, we had our one of our first orders a few weeks ago for posting across the uk so um, they, they turned out fine they got they made it okay so obviously we packaged them correctly um but yeah no it's been fantastic we did an instagram live with sarah actually which is on our instagram page um and she gave some great tips about plant care and how to revive all your house plants and she showed us some of her collection and she's got some amazing plants that she's taken in as you can imagine her house is just mad of amazing amazing really mature plants but very wonky and kind of growing in funny ways um so i think that's the thing is don't strive for perfection because you know they will always have a bit of a brown leaf or they will always you know go a bit leggy at times or whatever especially in the winter um, um, so I think just accepting them for kind of how they are, which sounds a little bit cliche, I guess. But um, yeah, oh, I don't just know. Going... I don't know. I think that sounds wonderful. I can, see, I can see your cheese plant in the back there. And uh, I love the form of it. I think sometimes just letting them do their own thing is is the best way. Yeah, it's it's definitely doing its own thing. <laughs> um, but I love I love them for that. I love I love letting them be themselves and not trying to uh, shoehorn them into something too much um yeah if you've got the space though they tend to get a bit a bit wild yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, especially monsters, yeah <laughs> thank you so much Liv it's been a wonderful conversation yeah it's been fab Liv shared some amazing tips on starting our own houseplant journey we've summarized her tips in a pdf which you can find alongside the show notes in the changing nature podcast section of the arcana website at wearearcana.com Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and a review. To keep up with all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at From Arcana. 
Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.